All right, guys. Um, the last measure of the center of our data that we're going to use a lot is what we call the mean. The mean is the average, um, and the mean is used frequently to compute like test averages in a class. Um, so to find the mean, we basically add up all the data values and then we divide that by the number of data values. Uh, let me give you, walk you through an example on how to find the mean. By the way, I'm gonna giving you more variable or symbols later, but the symbol for the mean is the letter X with the little bar on top. This is really special. Whenever you see this symbol, it is referred to the mean, okay? So, what I want to do here is I want to find the mean for Linda to see whether or not she has a B in biology. Here are her test scores. So, I'm going to start by adding up the data values. Okay. Um, I'm going to go 58 plus 67 plus 60 plus 84 plus 93 plus 98 plus 100 and then uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 so she took 7 tests alright she took 7 tests and that is the number of data value which is 7 so we divide that by 7 and if you add all these up and divide it by 7 you're gonna get 80 and 80 is an average or 80 is the mean we can also say that x bar equals to 80 because remember that x bar is the symbol for the mean so will she get a b in the class yes she will because her average is 80 all right that's how you find the mean by adding up all the data and then dividing it by the number of data points. All right, throughout this course, uh, we are going to use a lot of symbols, and I want you to know some of these symbols. Uh, first of all, the symbol X is going to represent your unknown, right? So X could represent her test scores because before I add them up, I didn't know what they were, so they're X. And what I did was I sum up the data value so I sum these up um, another way we use to express summing the data values is we go sum that's the symbol for adding the data values because those are the data values so maybe I'll highlight the word sum that goes along with the symbol I'm summing I'm adding the data values because X are the data values um, the number of data in the sample Notice that in this sample, she took seven tests. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the number of data is seven. That is represented by the letter N. Uh, the mean of the sample, we found it earlier by adding up these numbers and then dividing it by seven. So we found the mean and it happens to be 80. Uh, the symbol for that is X bar. Okay. Now, the number of data in a population, unlike the number of data in a sample, if you recall from what we did in class today, the letter to represent the number of data in the population is capitalized N. Think of this as the number of people in the class. Think of this as maybe picking 10 people out of 35 people in the class okay now the average of your population is you is represented by this symbol we call it mu okay it looks like the letter M but it's read as mu okay very good make sure you review that one twice if you have any questions make sure you let me know um, we're going to use this from time to time, but if we don't have specific data values, 
But let's say it were presented with a table like this, with a frequency distribution, then there is a way for us to approximate the mean. Um, and to approximate the mean, what we're going to have to do is we need to first find the, um, the midpoint. Okay? So maybe let me kind of write out the how we approximate the mean. What we're going to do is we are going to take um, the midpoint and then times it by the frequency and then divide it by the number of frequency. So, so I'm going to go ahead and draw another column here and I'm going to label this as the midpoint. Okay. Um, so the midpoint between 40 and 44 is 42. The midpoint between 45 and 49 is 47. 52, 57, and then 62. Um, I'm going to multiply these together. So if I multiply these together, uh, I get <coughs> uh, 3 times 42 and 3 times 42, so 3 times 42, that equals to 126. 5 times 47, 5 times 47 equals to 235. Uh, 10 times 52, that equals to 520. Uh, 5 times 57, that equals to... 285, uh, 1 times 62, which equals to 62. I'm going to go ahead and add all these numbers up. So, um, so here's how I would represent it. The, the, the average right, is about, it's about, I'm going to go ahead and add all these numbers up. 126 plus 235 plus 520 plus 285 plus 62 and I'm going to divide it by the sum of the frequency so the sum of the frequency is uh, adding all these up uh, so I got about 18 uh, 23 24 divide that by 24 uh, I'm just going to do it on a calculator and see what the value is and then give you the value. Uh, comes out to be about 51.17. Okay. So um, let me kind of refresh what I'm doing here. Usually we find the average or the mean if we're given raw data like these but somehow if these data were used to make to make um, a frequency distribution and they get erased then there's no way for me to find the mean however I can approximate the mean the stand for approximate the mean by doing the following so what I did was I took the midpoint of each class, okay, I multiply it by the frequency as you can see, and then I add all those up, and then I divide that by the sum of the frequency. So let me write that down in symbol. The mean can be approximated by taking the, um, the sum, I'm going to use this symbol, the sum of the the midpoint okay times the frequency divided by uh, n remember that n stands for the the total data values okay so that's n so that's how we approximate the the midpoint uh, the, the average now don't let that confuse you but I'm sure it will get a bit confusing and if it does watch this part again and see what we're trying to do what are we doing here what does this mean right and see what it says it says com com compare this mean that you found to the real mean uh, if you look carefully we're off by about let's see from 
from 57, 57.5 to 51.17, uh, we're off by 6.33. And if you take 6.33 and turn it into a percent, you can kind of see that we're off by 11%. Off by 11% is a lot. So, so, so I would say that uh, uh, we are. So we, I would say that fifty-seven point one seven is not a good approximation to the real average because it's off by more than. 5%. So anything that's off by more than 5% is not a good average. I did that. I found 11%, so it's not a good average. The last thing for today is I want to show you how to use a calculator to find the average without doing a lot of work. Okay? So in order to do that, you start with a calculator, a graphing calculator. So get used to how to turn on a graphing calculator. Let's say if a calculator was off you turn it on by the button that's below here. Okay? Now once your calculator is turned on, the next thing I want you to be able to do is to enter these data into the calculator. To do that, we will start by pushing stat, edit, and enter. Okay? So, stats right here, and then to choose edit, you hit option 1, so hit the number 1 down here. And then if you see anything in here, go ahead and erase them. To erase them, you use this up arrow to go up, hit clear, and then you have to hit enter. Okay, So hit enter and that clears it. I also want to clear this second, this first column, so I make sure it goes up there hit clear and then hit enter and it clears the data now we're ready to enter these data so that we can use the calculator to find the mean um, so here we go 58 so I'm going to type in 58 hit enter okay hit enter right here and then that register the data go 67 enter 60 enter 84 enter 93 enter and that's all you have to do so you enter all the data good the next thing I want you to do to to uh, ask the calculator to calculate the mean is to push the stat button okay so I'm gonna slide over here so stat see how stats right here stat and then slide over to calculate you see how it says slide over to calculate so you slide over to calculate and then you want to make sure that one var stat is highlighted, which it is. See how one var stat is highlighted? And then all you have to do now is hit enter. After you hit enter, you want to make sure that the list says L1. Okay? And then once it is, it, it says L1. Okay, now if you have a TI-83, you won't see L1. If you don't see L1, here's what I want you to do if you have a TI-83, okay? Or if your screen looks like mine, just go ahead and pause it for now. If your screen doesn't look like mine, here's what I want you to do next. I want you to go ahead and hit second and then option one because by doing that, you're accessing L1. So once you have pushed second option one, you now will see L1 show up. And all you have to do is hit enter now. So I'm going to go enter and then enter and look we have the average the average uh, can you tell me what the average is you might not see it on oh it's right there actually 72.4 so that's the average okay um, which means that I did I make a mistake on my list I did uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4. I only enter 5 data, guys, so that's why our number was off. But I'm going to go ahead and go back here real quick and put in 100. Okay, if you need to go know how to get back here, remember, just follow the instructions that I wrote down there. So stat, calculate, one var, 
and then remember if you forgot the step watch the first part of watch the previous few minutes of this the last few minutes before I got here and then you're gonna be able to see it but look the average is 77 so I guess once again I lie to you because um, because oh two four five okay um, one two three four five six seven uh, one two three four five six okay so as you can see I didn't enter all my data and that's why it was a little off so that's 98 that's another one right um, so sorry about that mishaps make sure you enter all two four seven data and then just repeat the same step and you should get your average because I knew my average was 80 uh, which is right there okay so sorry about that little uh, um, error so that's how you find the average using a calcul graphing calculator so um, you're gonna be able to do that um, using a graphing calculator look at this last graph that I want you to be able to see uh, if your data is normal which what that's what it looks like then your mean median and mode will be will be the same if your graph is skewed to the left then if you look carefully you can kinda see that the mean is the first number followed by the median which is the number in the middle and then the mode is the last number that's the number that occurs the mode remember the mode is the number that occurs the most so the number that occurs the most will be the highest bar okay um, if your data is skewed to the right then the mode which is the highest bar that will be the first number followed by the median which is the middle number and then the mean is going to be all the way to the, the right all right uh, don't worry about this too much if you haven't really fully understood it uh, we'll talk more next time